Hello there, and welcome to chapter 3 of Fluttershy's Bad Hair Day. And I'm sorry if I feel like I've been putting all my effort into reading. I don't know. Like, my voice might sound a little dull sometimes, or I don't know. The voices sometimes can be hard to stay consistent with those. But anyway, I'll, I'll really try to put effort into this one this part of the chapter. And all chapters will be split into two parts in this one, because like, fr from this chapter on, every chapter is 6,000 words, and then the last one is 8,000. <laughs> so yeah. So, thank you for those who have listened, who have stayed with me since the beginning. And here's chapter three. Angel? Angel, bunny. Angel, wake up. Angel pried open an eyelid and squinted up into the pair of big teal eyes staring down at him. What do you want, the shy? He groaned. It's morning, Fluttershy said happily. You said you would take me to visit the place where the animals live today. Angel rolled over and buried his face in the grass. Mm -hmm. He replied disinterestedly. Fluttershy paced back and forth on the front lawn of the library as she waited for Angel to pick himself up off the ground. The sun was barely peeking over the horizon, but she was already excited to get started with her day. If all went well with Owlicious's research, this could very well be her only remaining day as a rabbit. She couldn't waste it. Fluttershy giggled to herself at the thought of finally seeing the place where the animals spent their time when they weren't visiting her cottage to eat or receive some other treatment. Surely such a place must be some kind of friendly underground utopia, especially if it was under the careful care of Angel and his friends. Angel finally sat up and glanced at the sun. He frowned. Seriously, Shai, he complained. I said we were going to go to the city today, but I didn't think you would want to go so early. He got to his feet and glanced around. Although, I guess you might as well. Since the ponies aren't around and about yet, it'll make for a quick trip back out of Ponyville. We'll spend the afternoon down there, and then come back to the town tonight. Hopefully we'll find feathers with a cure for this mess. Angel stretched for a moment before glancing at Fluttershy to make sure she was ready to go. Then he took off down one of the streets. After only a few stops to avoid the passing hooves of a few particular early risers, the two rabbits reached to one of the pathways that stretched out from Ponyville into the countryside. He pointed to a large, low hill at the top which sat a, a gnarled old stump. That's the place, he announced. Under that stump is the main entrance to the biggest animal residency in the immediate Ponyville area. It's also the closest one to the Evertree. In fact, some of the furthest reaching tunnels expand out to the main area reached up, reached right up to its borders. Wow, Fluttershy said. The Everfree Forest is even further than my cottage. I didn't know the rabbits had tunnels that long. Angel smirked. You underestimate us, kid. Where do you think my tunnel in the, in the cottage ultimately leads? He asked. The cottage is directly connected to the Master Underground Network by several tunnels, since everybody knows that a visit from the main mare is a great way to get a bite to eat. You may not be available to provide right now, but your friends are doing a fair enough job in your place. Angel marched up to the hill and hopped to a tunnel nested between the two roots of the stump. Fluttershy was able to easily follow. This tunnel was very different from the one they had used to sneak into the library. While that one was incredibly cramped and uneven, this one was wide and smooth. It was clearly used very often, and probably frequently, by animals larger than rabbits. Angel hopped over a few roots, growing across the path, and turned another corner. As Fluttershy followed, the sounds of footsteps and the distant voices from small animals began to reach her sensitive ears. Fluttershy could barely stop herself from squeeing, squealing in the delight of her destination drew near. The pair arrived at an obstruction, a pair of crude swinging doors fashioned from slabs and rotting log. Angel pushed them open and motioned for Fluttershy to follow him inside the chamber. Cautiously, she entered, peering around the interior in interest. 
This was unquestionably the largest underground chamber Angel had shown her thus, thus far. The ceiling was so high, even a full-grown pony could fit inside. The interior of the room was several pony lengths, and dealt in both length and width, creating a considerably large space for a small rabbit. The large chamber was packed with various creatures, milling around and as they tended to their daily business. The impression Fluttershy got was not unlike that of Ponyville Market on a busy morning, only on such a smaller scale. She scanned the crowd of the animals, searching for anyone she recognized. The group consisted primarily of rabbits, but there was a variety of mice, squirrels, and other small animals, as well as a few frogs and lizards. There was even a small water inlet on one side of the room where the fish gathered. Oh my, Fluttershy breathed. It's even bigger than I expected, but what are they all doing here? This just like the market in Ponyville, Angel answered. So they are socializing and trading mostly. We don't really have any currency like you ponies do. We just trade resources, for the most part. A few feet away, Fluttershy watched as the deal was struck between an old chipmunk and a little mole who exchanged a few types of nuts and berries with one another before departing again. I wish I had brought, I wish I had brought something along to trade with some bunny, she mumbled. I wouldn't worry about it, Angel said. You'll find that more than a few critters are waiting to give me a little of theirs for free. I'll just share a little with you. For free? Fluttershy asked. Oh, they must want to thank you for providing them with all the help you and the other rabbits give. Something like that, Angel mumbled, glancing around the chamber again. Anyway, come on, let me show you around somewhere else. Oh, but aren't we even going to meet anybody here? Fluttershy asked. Uh, later, said Angel hurriedly. He seemed a bit rushed for some reason, as if he wasn't comfortable spending too long in this place. Fluttershy gave in and followed him onwards. Angel proceeded down one of almost a dozen tunnels branching out from the central room's perimeter, with his companion close behind. As the sounds of the main plaza began to fade, Fluttershy began to see small openings in the walls of the tunnels ahead. These are the dens, Angel said. Everybody who prefers to live on the ground lives down here in the tunnels surrounding the plaza. If you were becoming a permanent resident, I'd set you up with a nice place down here. But I imagine by this time tomorrow you'll be back in your cottage and distinctly less rabbit-like, so a quick tour will have to do. Angel peeked into one of the dens, where a chipper-looking gray rabbit was dusting his furniture. The instant he noticed Angel standing in the doorway, he dropped his tiny dust cloth and st stood at salute. Uh, good morning, Capo. Uh, what can I do for you today, sir? Angel waved a paw, and the other rabbit dropped his salute. Relax, Angel said. I'm just showing my friend here around town. Well, uh, make yourself home then, sir, the rabbit insisted. That won't be unnecessary, said Angel curtly. We're not sticking around. I just need a good example then to show off, and yours is the closest. Fluttershy smiled as she glanced around the rabbit's home. A number of pieces of furniture were built from discarded scraps of the world above, much like the room Angel had taken Fluttershy to shortly after her transformation. A store of vegetables was stacked in the corner. The whole place had a comfortable feel. Fluttershy realized that if she was in fact a rabbit looking to live here, she'd be quite happy in a place like this. It's very nice, she complimented, earning a small smile from the den's owner. I'm guessing you're another one of Angel's workers, then. It's probably due to his hard work that you can have a nice home like this. He is really so good to everybody, isn't he? To Fluttershy's surprise, a brief look of worry crossed the gray rabbit's face, and he glanced up briefly at Angel. His small frown was quickly replaced with a nervous smile. Uh, yes, of course, he replied. Keep up the good work, Capo. Angel nodded. Yeah, well, come on, Shy. Let's leave this fellow to his business. Okay, Fluttershy agreed. Thank you for showing me around, Mr. Rabbit. No problem said the gray rabbit weakly. Fluttershy hopped out. Angel waited until she was a few feet away, then turned back to the gray rabbit, putting a paw to his mouth to hide the words from Fluttershy. Don't forget, there's a meeting tonight, 9 p.m. 
I'll be there, sir, the gray rabbit replied. Angel just nodded before exiting the other rabbit's home. The day wore on, and much the same way Fluttershy was treated to several more highlights of the animal city. She became acquainted with a few more rabbits than that worked for Angel, and was shown with many of the shortcuts used to allow the animals to reach a number of key locations on the surface above them. The level of organization of the sprawling underground complex was incredible. However, Fluttershy couldn't help but feel slightly troubled about a reoccurring personality trait of many of the rabbits she encountered. "'Angel?' she said finally, as she followed her guide towards another wide public area. "'Is it just me, or do some of the rabbits seem to get a little nervous when we come in? "'Is there something going on?' Angel stopped, thinking quickly. "'Uh, no, no, nothing wrong. "'I think they're just a little antsy about getting to meet you. "'I mean, you are the main man after all.' They're probably just trying a little too hard to make sure they're living up to your expectations. Oh, well, I think most of the rabbits I've met today seem to be just splendid little dears, Fluttershy said. Their homes are lovely, and they're very respectful. Come on, let's go visit another one to prove it. Fluttershy abrupt, turned abruptly to head down another tunnel. Bane Angel le leapt into her path, spreading his arms and blocking her way. Not that the tunnel, he insisted. Fluttershy cocked her head. Why not? Because, um... Angel fished for an excuse. Because we've bothered enough citizens today, don't you think? I'm sure they're fine. How about you and me go on to town and get something to eat instead? Fluttershy paused, thinking. Then she shrugged. Okay, I guess you know best, Angel. She agreed. Angel breathed a discreet sigh of relief and let Fluttershy onward up to the tunnel he chose. A few minutes later, the pair, the pair arrived in what could only be described as a laid-back rabbit version of one of Ponyville's cafes. The fairly large subterranean room was dotted with tables, built from a variety of wide, flat rocks or debris from above. Fluttershy giggled as she noticed the trio of bunnies in one corner, playing some soothing jazz using hollow twigs and a Piece of, pieces of grass. This little though, Angel said. You hungry, kid? Fluttershy's stomach growled before she could respond. She smiled sheepishly. Angel walked up to the counter. The rabbit standing behind it started when he noticed who was standing in front of him. Afternoon, Capo, he said. What all be? Angel shrugged. Just a couple of carrot slices. And bring some to the lady, too. She's with me. The, the rabbit glanced briefly at Fluttershy and back at Angel. I'll get that right away, he said. And we happen to be lucky enough to have a little cider available today. Would either of you like some? Cider? Fluttershy asked. You mean like the apple cider Applejack makes? Yes, ma'am. The rabbit behind the, ha behind the counter said proudly. Care for a cup, little lady? Sure, Fluttershy said excited to be able to enjoy a familiar tree, even here in the Animal City. The rabbit disappeared into a small chamber behind the counter to prepare the meals, while his customers waited in front. Hey, boss. Angel and Fluttershy turned around, coming face to face with two familiar brown rabbits from the day before, and they hopped briskly towards Angel. Hi, Buttons, Fluttershy said cheerily. Hello, boys, Angel greeted. What's up? Capo, we have some news to report, one of the buns said. Some more information about the big job. Angel winced, and Fluttershy looked curious. The big job? she asked. What kind of big job? It's uh, nothing, really, said Angel quickly. Just uh, a routine community cleanup project, or something. Fluttershy appeared to be ready to ask another question. But Angel managed to spot the perfect distraction, sitting at a table in the corner of the room. But, uh, never mind that, he said. It ain't something you'd be interested in. But speaking of interesting, do you recognize that fellow over there? Fluttershy looked at the table on which Angel pointed, and was momentarily taken aback. Seated at the table was an animal which she had yet to encounter in the city. Contrasting starkly with the rabbits, the little creature had scaly green skin, 
and large, oblivious-looking purple eyes. Isn't that Gummy? Pinkie Pie's alligator? Fluttershy asked. Bingo, Angel said. Now, I got to talk to a boys here about some boring business stuff. So why don't you go over there and chat with him? I'm sure it'll be more entertaining. But, Angel, Fluttershy retorted, you know I want to learn more about how you run this place. I don't think your business is boring. I think it's wonderful. All right, tell you what, Angel said. You go chat with old Gummy now, and I'll fill you on the details about business later. After all, we might not be running to him again, and you don't want to miss the chance to meet one of your best pal's friends, do you? That's true, Fluttershy agreed. All right, Angel. I'll talk to you about it later, then. Ah, girl, Angel said. The waiter will bring your carrots and cider, and it's on me, so don't worry about it. Just don't take Gummy too seriously. He's a little, uh... Angel stopped, grew up with the right words. He's a little unique, but he can be fun to talk to, provided he's actually making sense today. Fluttershy giggled. <laughs> he sounds a bit like Pinkie Pie, she chuckled, before hopping over to the alligator's table. Angel waited until she was out of earshot, and then turned to the buttons, who both continued to stand at attention. There was a brief, awkward silence, but then Angel proceeded to once again slap both his Frenchmen across the face. You are two morons, he scolded. Sit down over there for a second. I don't think either of you understand the gravity of our situation. Angel motioned stiffly at an empty table, and the Button brothers immediately sat down. Angel scowled at the buttons as he sat down himself. Listen, boys, he said, as levelly as possible. It should be clear that this whole incident with the Fluttershy wasn't supposed to happen. If everything was normal, she'd still be a cheerful and merciful oblivious mare, shelling out food for us three times a day up at the cottage. But her reading the rival right now has to change the situation a bit. Angel leaned in closer, not wanting to be overheard by the other pages of the cafe. Now, here's the problem. Fluttershy doesn't quite understand the mechanics of her little organization. She's gone, con she's gone and convinced herself that I'm some kind of patriarch for this town, like her mayor is to Ponyville or something. She has no idea how this community really works. And we need to keep it that way? One of the buttons guessed. Angel put a paw to his forehead in disbelief. You numbskull, of course we need to keep it that way. Don't you understand the implications of Fluttershy finding out what we're really up to? The buttons shook their head in unison. Angel sighed. I've been going out of my way to show off only the parts of the city that present the qualities that fit Shy's delusion about us, he said. If she had any clue of how unsavory this whole operation is, and what life's like behind the scenes, what do you think she'll think of us? The button shrugged. Angel banged his fist on the table. She'd be a furious. And don't tell me you two haven't met the main mare when she's a furious. It's downright terrifying. She'd hate us all so much that she'd probably stop giving us the surplus we need to keep this business running the way we want it to. Angel paused briefly to let the implied consequences sink in. So, when all this is said and done, he summarized, the main mayor's opinion of us is directly tied to the well-being of this organization, and it's becoming increasingly difficult to keep the truth from her when a couple of jamuks like you keep blabbing about our plans right in front of her. Am I making myself clear? Finally, the buttons nodded. Good, Angel said. Now, you two know we have a meeting to discuss the big job this evening. You can tell me whatever reason you need to tell me then. I'll make sure Fluttershy is occupied somewhere else. And that federal old duff who lives at the library is still working on a cure for Fluttershy's problem. So hopefully, things will be back to normal by tomorrow. If we can get on planning this properly. Right, boss, one of the buttons affirmed. Sorry for the trouble, the other one added. Good. I'm glad we understand each other, Angel said. There was a short pause, and then one of the buttons cautiously spoke up. Boss, aren't you worried about the crazy green guy going to tell the main mayor about our organization? Angel scoffed. Gummy doesn't understand the organization well enough to realize that it's a bad thing, he replied. You know how he is. He just goes on spewing philosophical nonsense at anybody who will listen. 
He doesn't seem too concerned about the shady business we're running here. He probably just gets outlook on life and that the matter he lives with. But he's no real threat to us. I don't, I don't think he's going to tell Shai anything. At least not directly in front of her to understand it. Angel stood up. We need to get going. After Shai's done here, I want to get her out of this place before anybody else lets something slip. And I'd appreciate if you two just kept your trap shut around here until she's a matter again. Angel shot one final glare at the button's direction to emphasize the point, before turning and nearly bumping the waiter who had been trying to deliver his order. What are you looking at? He asked testily. He snatched his meal from the tray and jammed it into his cheeks in one huge bite, before storming off to find Fluttershy.